Hey everyone, so today we're going to be starting a different type of video series where in this we'll be building an automated trading bot based on a strategy that we will write together in TradingView. So in this episode we're going to write the script and then the next video we'll look into backtesting and optimization and then after that we will ultimately convert the script to an automated trading bot. And in this script, we will be focusing on low time frame volume spike. So I've already written a script from this. I've basically just copied it here. But the premise is that volume spikes often foreshadow reactions in price movement. So if you see price taking out a liquidity level, you often see volume coming through. And oftentimes there is some reversal happening um, to some extent for even if it's just, you know, 30 points to 50 points on the NASDAQ, it's still a, a sizable move for something that's just scalping. Now, I typically like pairing volume spikes with inducement setups or stop hunts, but we will keep things simple for now and only focus on the volume portion. Maybe in future series we can get into some advanced market structure type stuff, but for now that's a little complex. So we're going to add three optional parameters to this script in an attempt to filter out signals to the best possible results. The first is going to be looking for valid highs and lows. Second is going to be looking for valid hammer and shooter candles. And third is going to be looking for same close volume spikes, meaning we'll only be looking for long signals on volume spikes from up close candles and short signals on volume spikes from down close candles. So I'm going to open up the Pine Editor tab right here and we'll access our script. This is the finished version right here. I'll leave it in the description for anyone that wants to check it out. But since we'll be creating this from scratch in this video, we're going to go to Open and then Create New Strategy. And normally if you're just making an indicator, you could do open create new indicator, but since we want to do some back testing as well, then we're going to use this strategy. That way we can use the conditions that we create in the script to ultimately determine strategy entries and strategy closes. So to get started, I'm just going to delete all this for now. I'm going to delete this as well. And one thing that I want to include right away is commissions. Especially since we're looking on such low time frames, we may incur a large amount of trades in a short amount of time. So we definitely want to factor in commission to our back testing right away. So from here we can do commission type and we'll do commission cash per contract and we'll make that a commission value of two so two dollars per contract and we're also going to add some slippage here so that when we deploy this bot in real time and it's you know perhaps we're doing market orders to guarantee our fills then we can expect some slippage and kind of factor it into our back testing results so now we can get into some of the actual settings of this strategy and so we can start to think about how can we quantify a volume spike if we look at the chart, we can see that, you know, volume is relatively high here, here, and here. But how do we actually get our code to acknowledge that? So one super simple way to do that is just throw on a moving average to this volume and see if it's above some threshold, which, which we can say is, you know, some factor of this moving average. So if we say volume should be greater than one times the moving average, then all the volume above the red line will be considered for a valid volume spike. If we say, if we set that setting to two, for instance, then we would be looking at twice the volume spike. So this would probably pop up, this one would, and this one would. So we can use this theory of a volume multiplier and just make a variable called vol x and make this an input, make it a float value. So we can use a decimal. So for now, we'll just make it one or 1.0. Minimum value of zero, since you can't be below zero volume and a step size of 0 0.1. So what this is gonna do is when you're actually able to tune the parameters of this, then, you know, the up and down arrows will just change it by 0.1 instead of the default value of one. And we'll say title is volume multiplier. And we can add a parameter for our volume moving average length, since that could be something that we want to adjust and, and play with for the back testing. We'll call that volume SMA length. And I'm just going to add the parameters that we said we were going to use for to filter our results. So I'll say only valid highs and lows, we'll call it that is input true for now. So by default, it's gonna be true. And we can do the same thing for only hammers and shooters. We could say input true by default, only use hammers and shooters. And the same thing for only same close volume spikes. And one more thing I'm gonna do is define a session period. So I wanna be able to define a window of time that we wanna execute all these trades and whether we wanna only trade during, you know, real trading hours, 9.30 to 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, or run it, you know, 24-7 or whatever we want to do. Just another option to play around with in the backtesting. So we'll say session, and we'll say default value of, let's just run it all day for now. And now we can check that the current time is valid in our session parameter by saying t is not na, which is basically, you know, by saying it's not na, we're basically saying that it exists. So time frame dot period, then we're going to use our session parameter that we made. And just to see how this works right now, we can do, we can just simply plot a shape for whenever time is valid. We'll say plot shape 
t being the condition that if it is true, then it will plot a shape. Style equals, let's just say, shape dot circle for now. I'm actually going to change this size to size dot normal, just to make it a little bigger. And we can see that this is plotting everywhere because we defined the default session to be midnight to midnight. So if we change this to just real trading hours, we could do 830 to 1500. And now it's only plotting from 930 to what will be 4 o'clock. We can check the previous day as well. So it stops at 4 o'clock. I am in the Eastern time zone, so I'm not exactly sure why you need to define it as 830 instead of 930 and 1500 instead of 1600, but that is what works, so I'm just going to roll with it. So now that we know we can see what times are valid, we can move on to calculate whether we have some valid highs and valid lows. So I'm just going to delete this for now. So if we look at what is actually a valid local high and a valid local low, you'll know that it's a three bar pattern. You need three bars to be able to close to tell you if something is a valid high or a low. We can say if something is a valid high, then one candle ago is high should be greater than the high from two candles ago. And also the high from one candle ago should be greater than the high of the current candle. So if this expression returns true, then we will have a valid high. And same for valid low, or we can say the low from one candle ago should be lower than the low from two candles ago. And that low from one candle ago should also be lower than the current low. Now we want to incorporate this setting to be able to toggle whether we even want to consider valid highs and lows. Maybe we don't, but we need to factor this into our calculations here. So we can say if only valid highs and lows, and we can do this inline if statement by putting a question mark here. So if only valid highs and lows is true, then we are going to execute this expression and return that value. Otherwise, we're going to put a colon right here and say true. Because if we have this unchecked, then we don't really care about what a valid high and a valid low are. We just want to see everything. And same thing here. We can say only valid high and low. Question mark. If that is true, then execute this entire function. Otherwise, return true. And now we want to calculate whether a candle is a valid hammer or a valid shooter. So to get valid hammers and valid shooters, we're just going to check if the candle body is above or below the midline of the candle from its high to its low. So we can make a variable called midline and say that high minus the low, this is the height of the candle essentially, but we don't want that. We want the actual price that is in the middle of the candle. So how do we get that? We would need to take this distance, divide it by two. So we now have half of the candle height, but now we need to add that to the low and that will be the midline of the current candle. So now to determine a valid hammer, we can say, if the open is greater than midline and the close is greater than the midline. And also for a valid shooter, same thing. If open is less than the midline and the close is less than the midline. Now again, we want to acknowledge that this is an optional parameter here. So we can take our valid high and low statement and say, if only hammers and shooters is selected, then we're going to reassign the value of valid high to be equal to valid high and valid shooter. This is going to be the shooter from one candle ago since the high, by the time we get this value, if something is a valid high, this is a three bar pattern. So the high will have happened one candle ago. So we want to see if there was a shooter from one candle ago. And that's what this index is here. And then for valid low, we're going to reassign that to be equal to valid low and valid hammer this time, again, from one candle ago. So that's all for the candle calculations. Again, we can plot this really quick just to see what it looks like. So we can do plot shape. And we can just say valid high. And since we have both of these parameters selected to be true, then we can just use valid high to see the hammers and shooters. We'll actually make this a triangle down so it's more visible what we're pointing to. And then I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and do the same thing for a valid low. So valid low right here. Let's do color.green, shape.triangle up, location.below bar. Actually, one more thing we're going to do is set an offset equal to negative one because we're only finding valid highs after it has already happened by one candle since it's a three bar pattern. So we need to offset this by negative one so that we're actually pointing to the hammers and the shooters. We're going to do it here, offset negative one, save that, exit pine editor, and now it's pointing to all the valid hammers and shooters defined by our criteria where the candle body for a hammer has to be above the midline right here. And in all these cases, it is. We have the body right here towards the top, towards the top, same thing here, same thing here. And then for a shooter, the candle body has to be below the midline. So, so candle body is at the bottom right here and right here and right here. 
So we know that that part works, we can just comment that out for now. Now what we can actually do is start checking for the volume. This is actually pretty simple, so we can say volume check is equal to volume greater than, and PyScript actually has some really nice built-in functions, so we can do ta.sma, put in volume right here, and you see right here it says length, so this is our parameter for volume moving average, which we defined as vol underscore ma. And we want to see if it's greater than this value times our volume multiplier, right? So we can say something like results bearish equals if we have a valid high and we have a valid volume check again from one candle ago since it's a three bar pattern to find a valid high and the time is valid within the session that we defined. And again, I'm just going to copy this to the same thing for bullish, change this to valid low and vol check one and T that's good. And I'm just going to take the shapes that we plotted above and paste that here. But instead we're going to look for result bearish and result bullish. And we're going to save that, exit pine editor. And now we see most of the same signals because currently our settings are such that our volume multiplier is only one. So we're looking for a hammer and shooter where volume is greater than this red line moving average right here. And it should only be defined from 9.30 to 4, so it should not be during aftermarket hours, which it doesn't look like it is. So if we go to the top left right here where our indicators are displayed, we can actually go to the settings and play with the parameters that we created. So we can say, let's do a volume parameter or a volume multiplier of 3. Now it'll only show volume spikes where we have a valid high and low, we have a valid hammer and shooter, and the volume from that candle was 3 times greater than the volume moving average. So we have a shooter candle right here, if we zoom in a little bit, and we have a big volume spike that we can assume to be three times greater than the volume moving average. So we can actually leave these shapes for now and just start putting our actual strategy entries and exits in and say, if our result bearish is true, then we want to enter short. So we can say strategy.entry and we'll just call it short. And we have to say strategy.short. We also have to define a quantity. So we can actually define all that stuff up above in our parameters again. Let's we'll go right below T and say quantity is equal to input of one for one contract. And we'll define our stop to be something like 100, which this is actually calculated for stop and profit targets are in ticks instead of points. So that's something to note. So if we're on NASDAQ, which we are right now, 100 ticks would be 25 points. And then we'll do our target, so you input 200, that's 200 ticks, or 50 points. So here, quantity is defined as the variable that we defined up there, just one contract. And we're gonna do the same thing, just copy this. If result bullish, strategy.entry, we'll do long, strategy.long, quantity is also what we defined earlier. So if we get a bearish result, then we're going to enter short. And if we get a bullish result, then we're going to enter bullish. And it does work out so that if you are currently short and you you get a long signal, then it'll automatically just flip your position so you go from short to long. Otherwise, we can say strategy.exit. We can just use this message to say exit short. And we are exiting from the short entry. Quantity equals quantity loss equals the stop parameter that we defined, 25 points, and profit is the target variable that we defined for 50 points. I'm just gonna copy that, do the same thing for longs. So exit long from entry defined as long, quantity is ones, loss is what we programmed, profit is what we programmed. And then one last thing, one edge case to consider is that if you know we just open a position at you know 3.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the market closes one minute later, then we want to make sure that we exit that position. So we can say, if not T, which means if we're not in the session that we defined, we can do strategy.closeall and just put a comment of those remaining trades at end of day. So save this. Now we can see our strategy is working because TradingView is telling us that we are getting long on this candle, shorting at this one, exiting short here, and doing the same thing. Now we can actually just adjust the parameters to be a little more generous so we can see some more trades, put it at 1.5, and we can see a lot more activity. We're only looking for volume spikes that are 1.5 times the moving average. And we can see that we get a lot of trade signals here. So if we go to the strategy tester tab, we can actually see the results from all, all these trades. And if we go to list of trades right here, that we can actually see how long we tested over. So we can see 
October 11, 2022, all the way to October 6. So this is only a few days of data. I already tried doing the deep back testing beta just to see if it would give us some more data, but it doesn't really work that well right now. But nonetheless, next episode, we can actually start back testing by playing with the parameters that we made and seeing how we can optimize this strategy for the best results. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you do, please leave it a like and comment. Let me know what you want to see in the back testing stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.